Um, so tonight, um, what I'm gonna share is about a, um, a plant that is um, found uh, very widely in the Pacific Northwest, and it's the alder. And the one that's most common in the Pacific Northwest here is the red alder. Although there are lots of different species of alder, and uh, there's the black alder as well. Um, not as common here, um, but uh, it is a um, species that is found. Uh, and I thought about alder just because it is so common, and it's nice to be able to just reach out and grab things that actually have beneficial uses um, for us uh, in both an edible way and a medicinal way. We're focusing on the medicinal aspects um, in this series. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, the alder um, is, a, is a very common tree. It uh, is a, a tree that is a pioneer species. It's uh, well noted for the fact that it has nodules on it uh, that are nitrogen fixing. So it's a nitrogen fixing tree a pioneering species and when it moves out or declines it leaves behind fertile soils for trees to come along behind it like the dug fir and whatnot. Uh, so as far as recognizing it, uh, it often has a very um, lichen covered trunk and moss covered trunk. When it's cut down the red alder has a red underbark that is very evidently seen here in this bottom left, bottom left corner. Um, <clears throat> And up here is a picture of a mature leaf structure. Here's some new leaves coming out. The catkins are probably already forming this, this time of year. So here are the catkins. These are the male uh, cones, essentially the male part of the, the, um, of the alder. Uh, so an alder tree is what we call monoecious, meaning one house, meaning that all of its reproductive um, capacity is on one plant. There are plants that are dioecious, meaning that there's a male plant and a female plant, uh, die meaning two, uh, two houses. Uh, so the ginkgo biloba is an example of that. There's a male plant and a female plant. Uh, but most trees are, are monoecious. Um, and this shows the catkins here and a last year's female cone. So there will be little um, uh, bracts that will come out of this and are the alder seeds uh, when that time comes. This is the new alder cone up here in the upper right. Um, and they will be fertilized by the pollen that gets released by the catkins. Um, so that's uh, the red alder, and most alder species are going to look very similar to this. Um, there's alder uh, japonica, uh, there's the black alder, um, Alnus glutinosa, um, and then the one that we have here in the Pacific Northwest is Alnus rubris, uh, the red alder. <clears throat> So the parts that are used in the, in the alder are the leaves and the bark and uh, the medicinal properties that are associated with, with them. Uh, one of the major ones is they function as an astringent. Um, so it causes tissue contraction, essentially vasoconstriction to some degree. Uh, so it's very helpful in minor bleeding and abrasions. Um, the bark in particular is uh, useful as an emetic, uh, i.e. it can induce vomiting if necessary. Um, it's also a hemostatic, which means that it stops bleeding or shortens clotting time. Hence, we'll see this used um, in wound uh, cases where you have bleeding taking place can aid in the, um, the stopping of bleeding. It's also uh, mucilaginous. Essentially, that functions to soothe inflamed mucous membranes. And uh, overall, it's a tonic and can be used to uh, strengthen the entire system. Uh, that would be the leaf portion of it as opposed to the bark. Uh, the bark is the one that tends to be more, um, more astringent and having the emetic properties associated with it. So some uses of the barks and leaves. The leaves are, have uh, more therapeutic uses um, and are preferred if they're ability, able to get them. Actually, the dried leaves are useful as well as the fresh leaves. Uh, so they're useful for all kinds of swellings. So again, an astringent causes a contraction of tissue. A swelling is an expansion of tissue, typically done or as, a, as a cause of a result of trauma. Um, so spraining an ankle, for example, you have lots of tissue or some tissue that got torn there. Then you have white blood cells and um, other factors coming into the site and causing inflammation and swelling. So it can take down that inflammation. So in that 
regard. It's an anti-inflammatory agent uh, as well. So taking the green leaves, crush them up, and uh, you can make a poultice that you can apply to the swellings. So this is this is just great stuff to have if you're out um, boonie crashing through uh, the woods or just walking on a trail, have someone or yourself roll an ankle um, or branch comes down, hit you on the, on the head, um, you, can, uh, you can have some ready first aid right at hand. So it also aids in the relief of, of pain and swelling um, the, the leaves. So you'd wanna crush those so that they had some juices that were, were coming from them. Uh, alder leaves aren't the juiciest leaves, but if you crush them uh, to a point where you can get some, some juice to start coming out of them, then they'll, they'll have um, a moist, moistness and a more um, uh, functionality. So the green or the dry leaves can be used as a poultice um, for pain and inflammation conditions of the breast. Um, so that, that could be helpful in some situations. Um, a recipe that is uh, um, available for uh, using the leaves, take a heaping tablespoon of the crushed alder leaves uh, to one pint of boiling water. Let that steep for half an hour. Uh, and then uh, that would be used for a, a, a tea, um, but then you can also use it as a poultice. You wanna just use just enough water to moisten those crushed leaves um, if they're dry. Uh, so that they have, uh, have the water that can just aid them in their um, conformity to the area that's being treated. The fresh leaves um, can be used uh, on feet. So if you're, you know, on a long, a long trek and uh, you have aching, burning feet just from the blisters and whatnot, laying the fresh leaves in the insoles uh, where the bare feet can come in contact with them. Also um, bathing the feet in a strong uh, leaf tea can be helpful. So just kind of bring, bring your feet back into tone and tonic and, and condition. Um, so if you're on a long, a long trek and um, need some foot relief, that can, be, that can be a helpful way to address that. The bark, um, <clears throat> the bark, uh, if it's, when it's fresh, um, can cause a vomiting. So used as an emetic, um, if it's taken internally, uh, but a bark decoction, remember decoction is, uh, is made when you take some hard part like the root of the bark <clears throat> and um, boil it in water for 20 minutes to 30 minutes. And then that, that water that's poured off can be used. Um, in this case, it's a gargle for a sore throat. Um, <clears throat> so wash it around your mouth uh, and, and gargle it and spit it out. So if you drink it, it may cause vomiting, um, but by just rinsing it out and spitting it out, you can aid in the, um, in the sore throat. So English herbalist uh, uh, Culpepper had this to say about um, the alder. The alder leaves gather, gathered while the morning dew is still upon them and brought into a chamber filled with fleas will gather them thereunto, which being suitably cast out will rid the chamber of these troublesome fellows. So there's evidently some insecticidal qualities that are, are uh, indicated for it as well. Not that they're necessarily killing it, but that they attract fleas. Um, I'd be interested to try this sometime and see how, that, see how that works. But especially in the time when he was functioning, when he was alive, this was back in the 15, 1600s, um, certainly, uh, fleas were an issue in dwellings in a much more um, kind of uh, uh, pernicious way than they than they are traditionally today. Um, but uh, uh, so a flea riddance mechanism would be a welcome a welcome thing to have around. <clears throat> Nothing like crawling into a bed full of fleas. Yikes! Um, <clears throat> so having some insecticidal qualities um, is also part of the the alder. So here's a few um, things from uh, Eleanor Virick's uh, book, Alaska's Wilderness Medicines. Um, they actually have three different um, alder species that are common in Alaska, but all, the, all, up, way, all up and down the, uh, the West Coast, Pacific um, coast, all the way up into Alaska, we have a very similar uh, flora. So the, the um, trees are very similar, uh, the flowers and plants are very similar all the way up along the West Coast. Um, so it applies. Um, so the inner alder bark uh, is boiled and used by tea by natives of Alaska. Um, and they used it mildly. So you wouldn't want to take too much because again, it, remember it had that kind of emetic quality to it. 
and it's very bitter and has a, that uh, tissue contracting quality of astringency. Um, so it helped them rid themselves of intestinal gas. <clears throat> it was what we call a febrifuge or feverfuge in that it lowered, it helped to lower high fevers. Again, we see the, the throat, sore throat gargle, um, helping to uh, amplify or induce circulation, stopping diarrhea, use the tea as, a, um, as an eye drop for inflamed eyes, um, indigestion issues as an alternative. So an alternative is again, something that would bring their body back into tone. Again, the tonic um, is back to a healthful, um, healthful state. Um, so that would probably be, be taken in a dilute form um, because the inner bark does have some of those emetic qualities too. Again, uh, the Alaska Wilderness Medicines uh, mentioned that the leaf poultice is beneficial for, <clears throat> for a foot soak. So if you're on a, on a long trek, that can be a, a beneficial um, first aid or therapy, um, soothing quality for your feet. So one thing that was interesting to note in, in the Eleanor's work was that um, that fire burning from green alder can be hot enough to weld. That's a hot fire. Um, so green alder wood, you don't want to burn in your stove because it produces lots and lots of creosote, um, but it does burn. Unlike other woods that are green, they just, just don't burn well at all. Alder will burn green, um, but it does produce a lot of creosote. Um, and it also produces lots of heat. So that's, um, that's a good thing. Um, let's see. So um, it also has some anti-tumor activity. Uh, so the bark of red alder stems. So that would be probably not from the main trunk, but from um, the outer branches. Uh, so the active agents in alder are uh, lupiol and betulin. Um, so betulin basically is just derived from the family of trees that uh, the alder is a part of, and that's the birch trees. Um, so they have a similar catkin and um, cone kind of arrangement um, to birch, uh, but betulin and lupiol are the chemical activants that are uh, most um, indicated for anti-tumor activity. Uh, so this is from a paper, uh, Farpo Pharmo Cognosi Review, um, and the paper's name is uh, Bioactive Constituents and Medicinal Importance of Genus Alnus, i.e. the alder. So alder uh, in various species was well known for a variety of traditional uses in treating a variety of different diseases. So we have um, cancer, uh, uterine cancer, uh, down farther we have uh, um, other types of uh, inflammation of the uterus, uh, hepatitis, uh, rheumatism, dysentery. So again, we see it as a treatment for fever and being a fever lowering agent and stomach ache. So GI issues, um, fever lowering, and also some aspects in, in cancer and joint um, inflammation. Has some antimicrobial effects. So there's a crude extract is how it was labeled. Um, so essentially crude extra extract would be just like a regular tea decoction or a tincture. Um, and, if, and they actually found that it had activity against eight different strains of, of bacteria. A couple different, two or three strains of E. coli, uh, Citrobacter, uh, Lactobacillus, um, and Staph. So that's, uh, and as well as methyl um, um, MRSA. So uh, that's a resistant staph infection. Uh, Menthicillin, I think is what the M stands for. So uh, has activity against those um, microbial um, challenges. Uh, so that's, that's kind of cool. Um, it also was found to have in 2007 by you at all that it had um, HIV effects. So it actually functioned to inhibit um, viral replication. Um, it basically disrupts the reverse transcript transcriptase and protease enzymes of HIV, which is the, the component that is supposed to be the causative agent of, of AIDS. Um, HIV is humino, human immunodeficiency um, virus, um, and AIDS is the, the manifestation of that. <clears throat> um, but reverse transcriptase is an enzyme that essentially allows the um, the HIV virus to work backwards in the replication of its DNA and RNA in its host. Um, so it's an unusual 
um, methodology that's used by viruses. I think there's only two or three uh, retroviruses, we call them, that uh, work backwards as opposed to normally forwards. I mean, a protease is an enzyme that breaks things down. So we also see that um, uh, Buniatin in 1998 had uh, noticed uh, hepatoprotective effects. Essentially, that's protection for the liver. Um, the, the primary active component is Altan from the black alder cones. And they found that using this natural extract or substance from the black alder at a, at a one milligram per kilogram um, body weight uh, dosage, it was a tenfold smaller dose than the typical drugs, the flavonoid drugs that were used for hepatoprotective effects. So that's, that's significant that it took less to do the job. Um, so basically function as having anti-inflammatory effects and ways of stabilizing the cellular membrane and the overall the membrane of the, of the liver. Um, and then Choi et al. in 2003, uh, they did some uh, isolates from, uh, from bark, from, from the Aldus uh, japonica, and that's the Japanese alder. And they noticed some uh, cytotoxic activity against murine melanoma. So murine is, is uh, I believe it's um, uh, mouse, so mouse melanoma. Um, but they also found it significant um, in human gastric cancer, so stomach cancer, and human he hepatoma cancer, so again, that's uh, liver, and then human colorectal cell lines. Um, so interesting effects by, by alder. Um, so in Revelation 22, verse 2, we see um, a reference to leaves um, in a healing fashion. Um, this is referring to the tree of life in heaven, um, in the middle of its street, and on either side of the river was the tree of life, which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Um, so the tree of life is bearing fruit, 12 fruits in its season, um, and that's going to be sustaining and giving us our um, our infinite lifespan in heaven. So we'll still be needing the tree of life um, and the leaves will heal the nations. But we also have those same aspects, the, the healing of our own bodies by the leaves of the trees um, here on earth. And we're thankful to God for his providence in providing um, things that are beneficial for, for our health, both to keep it healthy and to bring it back into um, a state of health. 